Welcome to today's New Life Live podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by you. Your donations make this podcast possible. Please consider donating today using the New Life app. Visit newlife.com or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Greetings to you and welcome to New Life Live. Really glad you're with us here today. Joining me in the studio is Alice Benton, Dr. Alice Benton. Hi, Hi, Alice. How are you? Hi, everybody. Well, we just had a family spa night last night. Lots of foot massages. And my kids even put on face masks. So we're all refreshed. We're in a better mood today. What a great thing. You know, we had a similar thing. We um, all ended up uh, playing the game, What I Like About You. And everybody said three things about the other person, what they liked about each other. And uh, one of the things Solomon said about his mom was was her self-confidence. You know, now that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think a a child sees self-confidence. It's a young man that can can see self-confidence in a in his mommy. And so that was a great uh, thing. Well, a lot of great things this weekend. We had our life recovery conference on Saturday. And uh, I, I think, well, the place was full. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, one church, New Life Church, um, and I think they were from Oxnard. Um, they had about 20 people there with Life Recovery shirts on and stuff. But it was such a wonderful thing. Steve Bjorkman was there. He's got a brand new book on the digestive system, a little bit irreverent, kind of fits the Kirby McCook. <laughs> and uh, he dedicated that book. He did the illustrations. He dedicated it to Solomon. And I <laughs> took the book home, showed so- and he said, to Solomon, who gets me. And uh, they had quite a connection when we went to Greece. And so that was a wonderful mm-hmm. little surprise there. And uh, just a, a great weekend. I was at a wedding where two f- incredibly uh, fabulous uh, Christians got married. And Misty and I had done the premarital and, you know, you hear people talk about folks, uh, and at this wedding, uh, they were talking about their character, what they had done. You had my back. You led me to Christ. All these just amazing things, and it was such an honor to be there. So I want to tell you something. If you try, you're going to have a lot better chance of producing a young person with character than if you don't try. So I say <laughs> try. Give it a shot. Don't back away from it. Dr. Jill Hubbard has joined us in the studio. Hello, Hello Dr. Steve. Hubbard. I'm glad the conference went well this weekend. It was a great conference, and it was 12 steps to happier. And uh, I don't know, I think we recorded it. If we did, you should get a copy of it because it's great, great content. And uh, Dr. Stoop, Jack West, our friend Amanda that comes on here who uh, wrote All My Friends Have Issues. John Townsend was spectacular. All of that. It was just wonderful. And uh, we'll see you again next year at Mariner's Church for the Life Recovery Conference there. Well, we are thrilled that we're going to Columbus, Ohio. And the early bird special for the Intimacy in Marriage Intensive ends on October the 12th. And of all the things we do, this is the big one. Because here's, here's the thing. If Satan can get you to become an addict or something like that. He's happy with that. If he can destroy a marriage, which is supposed to be the reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church, well, I mean, he is thrilled to do that. It's a big target. And when we can save a marriage and then create something amazing out of a marriage that was dead, everybody benefits from that. So that's what we're gonna do It's October the 25th, Columbus, Ohio, Intimacy and Marriage. You can get about, I don't know, 400 bucks off a couple if you call today. 
it'd be a good thing. I don't know what you're waiting for, but there's nothing better than that weekend to help a marriage. 1-800-229-3000. We'll take a break. We're going to come right back after this. My wife had found me out and came home one weekend. She had revealed my secret. The only reason I was sorry at that time is because I had been caught. I had had the Every Man's Battle book for years and pulled that book out that weekend and found the phone number on the back and called it. And then a week later, I was at Every Man's Battle. It really gave me the start I needed for my recovery. I never had had that opportunity to sit down with guys I didn't even know and totally open up. The good thing was, was I was opening up to guys I didn't even know. So why did I care? Just lay it all out on the table. I have nothing to lose. You need to check it out. At least go online, check out what it's about, and take the chance and go do it. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to go on struggling. But you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterman here. Really hope you're having a great day today. The word of the day for my dictionary was Tellurian, you know, and what that, that refers to people here on earth. And, you know, Solomon and I were talking That's about... That's what we are, Tellurian? Yeah, we're Tellurian. Okay. okay. Good to know. And Thanks. Solomon and I were talking about, uh, you know, that he knows people that are atheists. Well, you know, if you don't know an atheist, It'd be great to know an atheist or two. That would mean you're kind of out there. You're not just, you know, in the holy huddle, all making each other feel great about it ourselves. And um, and so I just said to him, I said, Solomon, come on, tell him this. If God doesn't exist, how in the world did they film all dogs go to heaven? Well, he was drinking some milk. Oh. And the milk <laughs> didn't go where it was supposed to go. And uh, but I just I think it's so great that you know our young people they're they're around all sorts of people from all sorts of different faiths or no faith uh, whatsoever, and they're wanting I think answers. What do we say to these folks and how do we answer them? And uh, I want to I just want to remind you you know we featured uh, Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles all through last month. So here's what we're going to do. Something special, a gift of $20 or more. You're going to give us the name of the child you want it autographed to, and I'm going to do it. I'll draw a little picture for them. I'll autograph it to them, and we'll send it to you. So you just call us, $20 or more. Give us your address, the name of the child you want it to go to, and it'll make an amazing Christmas gift because you look really cool that you're giving this kind of gift. But the main thing is that it provides truth for them and an argument for them when they are confronted mm. with some kind of issue um, about their faith and whether it's real or not. Which is and so I good, think, Steve, at that age, right? Before yeah. they launch into the high school years, right? To have that foundation and really have those answers, I think is really important. Well, and, you know, if you're not working on that um, early on, uh, that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. But it's never too late to come in and say uh, to a child, hey, uh, I've been thinking about this, um, and I really do want to help you in this area. Maybe I've neglected it, and what a great thing uh, just to use anything as an excuse to go ahead and, yeah, just do it. All right, uh, we've got a caller here. I want to go to this caller, and uh, but... You know, you the call screener has to set someone free before you can <laughs> go to them. And so I, I think uh, that she's just now being set free. Hi, Steve Arterburn here with Dr. Jill Hubbard and Dr. Alice Benton. How you doing today? Okay, great. I met many of you guys on Saturday, um, and I was I know that you guys were, you know, I went to the Mariners Church and the conference and... Uh, I may have talked with some of you, but I know you guys were waiting in line to get on, back on stage to speak again. And so I'm at a crossroad pivotal point, and I called you guys last week, but I, I'm at this situation. I'm in a hotel. I've left my husband four times, but 
if he says if I find a joint counselor, he will go and he will work. And so I don't want to execute this decision of of calling the attorney, the attorney I saw on Friday, to have a filed a kickout order. And I'm to write a deposition. I didn't get any sleep last night writing okay, this deposition so, to make it stronger. And my okay. my question is, my question is, I just need help. I read Sherry Keeper's Narcissism Little Handout book, you know, about creating, and then I talked with Chris, and I just, I, but as far as having, like, I, a crisis, you know, like Henry Cloud is saying, like, you know, that you need to create a crisis in order for them to okay. actually just, just a second, break up. Just a second. Okay, I want you to slow down for a minute, okay? I'm sorry. I'm There's just trying a, to be considerate of your time. There are a lot of things that you're talking about. So yes. I want you to narrow it all down to, at huh. this particular moment, here's my number one need that I need help with. Is it finding a counselor that both of you could go to? What What is the biggest need you have that would cause you to call us? I need to get back into my house so I can be with my medical supplies. But mm -hmm. Or I just need to... I need to be in a place where I don't feel safe working with my husband. He's willing to work, but I don't feel like we can do it in the same underneath the mm -hmm. same roof. And I don't okay, know so where to go. Why is it that you leave rather than him leaving, given all of your medical requirements and equipment and all of that? Because he says, you're the one that left. I never left. I'm... I stayed, you left me four times. And I said, but you do look at what made me leave. And he, and, and so he's had a and so what, much what is it that what is it that made you leave? What did he do? There's been scary moments that it's not just, you know, screaming, but it, there's just been throwing, throwing my wheelchair. He's not this time, but other times in the mm -hmm. past. He was throwing okay. a fan at me when the baby, when the baby was a baby. You know, he also punched in my whole um, SUV's um, air conditioning and radio okay, so when he's, he got mad. He's so he's violent. Of, he, he's violent, full of rage, very scary to live with him. Jill, why don't you start off and... Help well, Gina, I, I'm so sorry help. that you're in this position, and there are times when you don't feel safe when it feels like the only option is to leave. So I do commend you for protecting yourself. Um, your husband says he's willing to work with you. Okay. I think that um, even though you don't trust him, I think you need to go with that a bit because it sounds like you do need to get to a more stable place so that you can make the best possible decisions. Gina, do you have you mentioned the baby. Do you have kids? Are they with you? Do they leave That's with you? Why. Yes, yes. So the thing is, she's she's five and she's at school now because she's in okay. kindergarten. But however, like my husband is paying for her private school, okay. and and I trust him to be able. Like he takes her back and forth from this hotel and takes her to, okay. to school, and she goes, she can spend she spends the night with him on the night that he doesn't work graveyard. So I feel trustworthy they laugh and they have so much fun and so but but when i am been there i mean i remember her at night praying because we you know she'll sleep with us and with me and and um in our bed and she'll say okay. she'll be while he's gone she'll be okay. praying pray with mommy his so, daddy will talk to mommy different Right. So I'm wondering if you could say, uh, you know, in order for us to work together, I need you to be willing, like you're doing all these things, like you always want to like praise the stuff he's doing right and say, but I need to be willing to, you know, have access to my medical supplies. I need to be in a stable environment. And so, um, you know, I think if he's really serious, like one thing that would show you he's really serious is let's have you move back into the house and let's work on a structured separation where the goal is to get the two of you back together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you, yeah, but, uh, we've done that with the counselor that yeah. came to uh, came the pastor, a pastor that came to the conference there. And, and we had like a two and a half hour conversation and, uh, and he says, well, this is not a mutual, um, Ag agreement. This is not a mutual separation, and and 
So, and, so here's the thing, though. Okay, he, he's saying it's not mutual. So you hear loud and clear that he doesn't want the marriage to go away. He he doesn't want to, it to end in divorce. And so I think, Gina, regardless of how you're feeling inside, you need to say to him, my goal is for reconciliation. My goal is to keep our family whole. But that's the key word, is having your family be whole, which means he's not abusive, right? And but so... He doesn't see it. Well, I'm not saying, like, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. Like, he, like he says, well, I've never punched you. I've never done this. Like, okay. these are the things that he had as a kid. But he says, you know, the, the parents I have now are not the parents I had as a kid. You know, he said, right. I will always fail you. I will always fail you, Gina. I am not a perfect person. I will always get, let you down. Gina, like, Gina, Gina it, it's okay to continue to pursue your legal rights with the help of the attorney because your husband doesn't seem to be able to acknowledge that he is abusive and he's dangerous and he's scary around you. He's done some very extreme things. And so if he is not willing to give you space in the house or he's not willing to step out of the house for a little while for your sake, then I think that lawyer you spoke with and pursuing that legal route, even though your husband's willing to go to counseling, and I agree with Jill, take him up on that. Mm -hmm. But I think you do still need to pursue your legal rights because your husband isn't, he's not open to that and he's not protective of you and your rights right now. Right. And I, I think when you're having these conversations, this is not the time to convince him that he's abusive. It's to set up the structure. And then when you get in with a, a professional therapist, then you can address the abuse. But you right. need the structure in place first. Okay. So, Gina, I'm going to just try to narrow this down to make it as simple as possible. You're the only person that can decide whether or not you're going to take a suggestion here. But number one is that you're kind of scattered and out of control in your direction. And you, you're, you're looking at a lot of different areas mm -hmm. rather than what is the most important thing for me to do. So here's the most important thing, whether you want to hear this or not. It's not a very spiritual answer in one way, but it is the most spiritual answer in another. You have to find an attorney to help you have the right to stay in your house. No, it isn't a mutual uh, separation. You want to be safe. And so whether uh, he's in that house uh, or not is if he can keep you safe and in that house, great. But an attorney can help you determine how safe you can be, how distant he needs to be for you to be safe. You don't want to subject yourself to emotional abuse, whether he ever hits you or not. A person that throws things is who I call King Baby. King Baby throws things out of the crib. A man who throws things is a baby. He's immature. He's defective. He needs help. He's not going to get help until it becomes uncomfortable. Living in his own home with you staying in a hotel, that's not uncomfortable for him. So you've called us for advice and I'm telling you it goes beyond talking to a pastor, reading your Bible, praying. Mm -hmm. You need legal help. I'm so sorry that that's the answer, but it is the answer. It's a legal control and power that you have to use to bring him into submission to where he might be willing to change. What is the motivator of change? Pain mm -hmm. for a guy like him. The more comfortable he is, the less potential for anything good to happen. Jill. So, Gina, I want you to get with a friend, someone that you trust, because you need support around you. Um, first of all, I want you to get sleep in a, in a safe place. Get some sleep so that you can have your best mind working for you. I want you to write down some of what you've heard us say, or all of what you've heard us say, um, but write down the things that you need from your husband, that if he's serious on wanting to work on the relationship, this is what you need from him. Okay, so that you are really clear so that when he tries to, I'm not really abusive, I'm not this. That's not the point. This is what you need, right? If he's serious about working on the relationship and if he like does those things, like allows you to live in the house, 
right? Gives you the space, works on a structured separation to move forward with a professional therapist. Um, those types of things. Then you can give it a shot. But like Alice said, you in the background, you still have the legal input. And you may, as Steve is saying, need to bring that out to the forefront to use if he's unwilling. All right. I'm glad you called. I'm going to send you a copy of Understanding and Loving a Person, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. There's a great section in there on what to do when it doesn't all work out. Uh, you need that section. Glad that you called. I'm glad you came to the recovery conference. I'm telling you, sometimes we, we just have to decide there's no answer here other than the one we don't want to take. Wow, that's horrible. But sometimes when you take that path, all of the possibility, all of the potential starts to open up because you did the tough thing. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. 1-800-229-3000. We'll go to you, Sarah, next from Toronto, Canada. You're listening to New Life Live. And if you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Don't get to the place of learned helplessness. It is no fun. Most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You're a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be his. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're glad. We are back. Glad you're with us here today on New Life Live. Hope and pray that uh, if you're struggling, you don't let it become disastrous. You get help in the early stage, not the late stage. Whatever it is you're dealing with, betrayal, addiction, anger, codependency, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. There are people there They want to help you. And I'll give you the best advice available for your situation. That's 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Let's go to Sarah. She's calling from Toronto, Canada. Listens Hi. on Sirius XM. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Excellent. What's going on with you today? Well, it's a rather long story, but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Good luck. My husband and, <laughs> my husband and I had... Um, a major argument about two and a half weeks ago, uh -huh. and he hasn't spoken to me since. What was wow. it? What was it that you feel like was such a blow to him that he could no longer have a conversation with you as an adult? What was that thing that just put him over the edge? Well, first of all, the conversation that we had. Um, 
he kind of got really mad at me when I asked him a question about And something. what was that qu- what was that question about? It was about his value, how he sees himself. Uh-huh. And then and then um I got really upset and I called my girlfriend and I asked her to come and get me. And so she came and got me and then I came back home and I packed a few bags and then I texted him and I said, I just need some space. I need to think because our relationship has been very volatile for the last little while. What does that mean? And volatile. What does volatile well, mean? He, it's very, um, like there's a lot of anger in our home with him mm-hmm. and I'm not sure what he's going through and he's been dumping on me a lot and um, I just kind of have had enough so I texted him the next day and I said um, I, um, my brother had called me the same day and he was really sick so I had to go spend a few days with him okay and so let's I talk about this to- yeah so so, so where are we now so he days. hasn't talked to me since and yesterday he said he's done he's done he's absolutely done with me okay so Sarah so, can I just ask so how yeah. old is your husband He's 54. Okay. Any life changes for him recently? Um, not that... Like at work? I think our outside of... Uh, well, there was one a few years ago at work, and he said that's when a lot of it started. And then I, you know, I encouraged him to, to talk to me and get support, and I had to create a boundary with him and saying, well, me supporting you is not letting you use me as a punching bag psychologically at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. And right. so I encouraged him to get somebody to talk to, blah, blah, blah. And so he seemed to have moved past that. And then he just seemed to be very angry and resentful of me for all the time. And and I don't know if he was seeing somebody or what. And I just kind of, maybe my part, I buried my head in the sand and pretended this wasn't happening because I wasn't sure about what to do. Okay, but that's when you saw a major shift in your relationship? Like, was it this way prior to? Yeah. Or it really took a turn at that time? we've been together 19 years. Okay. And uh, now he wants to not have anything to do with me anymore. And... I, right. I'm Ouch. kind of at the point where that's okay because although I'm sad, it's been so hard to live with him for like the last six months especially. I don't know if he's done something wrong and he feels bad about it or okay. what. So what's the question I, then? Not, what, how could, how well, could how, we How can I get him to communicate with me so that we can move past the acrimony that's in our home because we have two children there? Yes, and, and we you're need not to be in able the house. Dialogue with each other. And you're not in the Pardon? house. And you're I not am in, in the, the house. house. We're all in the okay. house. You're all there. You've got two kids there, and they're watching all of this. So, is he going yeah. to leave if he says he's done? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. He and how old are your kids? How old are your kids? They're 15, 15 and eighteen. And what are they saying to you? Um, well, uh, they haven't really said much. I've kind of been the one to dialogue with them about it, and I've explained to them that we're going through a rough time right now in our relationship, but I want them to know that they're safe and that they're loved. Good. And, and Sarah, and, ha- and Sarah have, you, really do. have you and your husband gotten any professional help as this has been going on? I asked him that. I even wrote him a letter because he won't talk to me, and he won't respond to anything I say and even in, in, the, in the like even in the past few years have you two gotten help for, uh, for these problems no but we did earlier on in our marriage and and we're both christians so that really helped us move forward and um you know get past struggles that we would have as a married couple and, and, and sarah even even though he says he's done it sounds like you want to fight for the marriage even though there are things that you will not put up with is that correct Oh, for sure. Okay. I like this. So, that, it's not an option. So two. For hold me on. Before. We uh, we're gonna yeah, yeah. We're gonna go to a break here. So uh, two phone calls, and we've got two men, angry. Um, 
two women don't know what to do. So I would say um, right now, scorecard is <laughs> Satan two, men zero, kingdom of God zero. We're going to give you some help when we come back. So you hold on, Sarah. We want to help you with this. And perhaps there is something here that we can do. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back talking with uh, Sarah here. Sarah, uh, just a quick question, and then I want to turn this over to Alice. You said that you asked him about his value. Why do you think that was such a big Huge deal trigger. to him? Why, was it, were you saying it sarcastically or in a demeaning way or what? what? Why was that such an amazing thing for him to be asked? He said he, he was tired of me uh, trying to be a therapist, which <laughs> I wasn't trying to do. I was just trying to help him see that what he was really concerned about in another area of his life, um, I don't know, wasn't important. Like, I, I, I don't want to say too much over the radio. You know what I mean? Well, here's, here's so, the thing. Here's okay. the thing. Um, you might feel like you were asking a genuine question that could benefit his life. He might feel like you're trying to control him. Okay. Like, like a therapist. You're trying to take control, manipulate, get information, use it against him, whatever. I don't know well, what Or it even, is. Steve, convince him out yeah. of his feelings. Convince him out of his feelings, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't sound like you were able to communicate true, loving care and concern. And so he reacted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not getting yeah. any help. You've told us you're not getting any help. Well, you're flying uh, blind yeah. here if you're not getting any help. We all right. need help. But if, I mean, it's just, right. it, it. It's mind-boggling that you and your situation are not getting help on a weekly, right. at least, basis. That you're not going to a support group. You don't have uh, somebody that can tell you, hey, this is a mistake. This isn't. Do this. Do that. And so, Alice, what do wait, you wait, think? Can, she I, can I, sorry, Alice, sure, can I speak? In. Can I yeah, jump in, ahead. Steve, about kind of the yes. train of thought that you were on? Yeah. Um, you, you know, Sarah, when we talk to someone, it's such 
normal human behavior to when someone's really down to want to show them the other side of things and to want to say oh but your value is in christ and look at all the good things and there's a time and a place for that but first of all when someone is feeling really low and really bad as it sounds like your husband was it's like you need to move Uh toward them and lean into their pain and so when you say wow that sounds really awful wow that's worse than i thought that's bad yeah like like you're on their team with how bad it is then they no longer have to convince you that it's horrible because and they you're feel, validating their yeah. experience and so they their feel pain understood. Not, yeah not questioning yeah. his and manhood then, then yeah. they can say well you know yeah it's bad but it's really not that bad there's this and there's this and there's this you give them the opportunity to then name the other side of it and so but it's hard to remember in those moments but Sarah, you yeah. you have some. So how do how do how do we go from that to I don't want to ever see you again, and I'm done with you, and I don't even want to talk to you? All right, like the, we're, the we're, this is this there is what this is, is, this is Sarah. This is where we're going to help you because I think you have some gold nuggets that you can use as an entry point to ask him to get help with you, and they are all aimed at you which is really important and it's going to seem unfair, but it has the best chance of, mm-hmm. of that invitation to therapy being attractive for your husband. So I think right now is the time to set the anger to the side, to not bring that up in this conversation, but rather to say, you know what? I realized it feels like I'm kind of trying to be your therapist and I know that's bothering you. Maybe I've even stuck my head in the sand lately and I haven't known how to handle what you're going through. Then when I left the other day, I wonder how that affected you too. So I think I need help in knowing how to handle things. And I know you said you're done, but we've got a 15 year old, we've got an 18 year old, we've got 19 years together. So I've got an appointment with a therapist from New Life from their network and I'm going and I hope that you'll come with me. Mm -hmm. And to maybe even throw in, you know, when I ask about um, your value, it set off such a reaction. I realized we weren't really connected enough for me to ask a question like that. Or maybe it came across in a different way. And I hope uh, that you'll allow me to be part of your life, that we could get back on the same page. It's not going to be easy or quick or instant. But I really, really would like to know you, care for you, care. I care about you, I love you, and um, please forgive me for whatever you thought I was doing there. I just want a connection so we can raise these kids, and I think if we stay together and persevere, God's going to bless that kind of commitment. That, that's what I would maybe mm-hmm. even throw in there. Now, I'll, um, I'll send you a copy of Take Your Life Back, and, and in there... It talks about needing to be the defender of your own value. Well, I'm hoping that he can become the defender of his value, but that he wouldn't need to because you would be assuring him he has value in your eyes no matter what he feels. And a guy that's had a tough time at work, you know, we're, we go through these stages. We wonder, are we more than just a paycheck to people? We, we go through another stage. Are we more than our accomplishments? And then you hit a certain age you're you're dealing with am i able to deal with my limitations am i still a man even though i have these limitations all this is going on inside of him and uh and you can support it or you can attack it and i hope that you'll find a way to get support for you first and the two of you second you need some daily guidance here 1-800-NEW-LIFE, if you need any help, we've got people that are there that would love to talk with you. And by the way, before we go to our next caller, I want to, I want to talk with uh, Larry Sonnenberg. Uh, Larry is in the studio, as I understand it, right, Larry? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll go to Wayne right after this. All right. You were at Every Man's Battle this weekend? or uh, you? Well, you weren't, but you heard some really good stuff from Every Man's yes, Battle. Yes, sir. I'm, I uh, have the closing thoughts, and I've read through some of these. I want to read one to you. Okay, good. Um, God brought me here through my wife's discovery of my destructive, addictive behavior. Pornography, and he, he, he lists a whole bunch of things I'd rather not read on the radio. He, he was okay. quite into it. I learned, about, I learned about myself this weekend. 
parts I never knew existed, parts I knew existed and were afraid to tell anyone. It hurt men, it hurt. Men I never met before listened, cared, shared, hugged, and loved me this weekend. God touched parts of my lost heart through my fellow brothers. This weekend has offered hope, redemption, and recovery. God is good. This weekend saved my life. Unbelievable. Folks, wow. if, yeah. if, if, mm. you, if you can get behind that, if you can get behind what this radio program does and what going to a counselor does, we have testimonies from all these things. And with the, the purpose that I come to the radio, Mike, and ask for your support is so that we can continue to do this and we can do it uh, bigger and better than we've done before. Uh, so we're looking for a single gift. If you make an individual gift, we'll give you 100 days of healing. It's just published, just came out. It's a beautiful, it's a brand new. Yeah, beautiful leatherish book, leather-like book. Um, and but if you would join Club New Life, that's thirty dollars a month, just a dollar a day. The thank you gift is to get all four of our hundred day devotionals. It's hundred days of prayer, hundred days of peace, hundred days of character, hundred days of healing. And these aren't just four little paperback books. Like I said, they're leather-like. They're beautiful colors. Each one's different. I mean, some you'd be proud to sit in your coffee table in your office, in your library, or you could give us a gift. It'd be a real nice gift. And if you could please help us, it's it makes all the difference, and we have been lacking the last couple of months. We mm -hmm. had a really good first seven months or so, but the last couple of months have been challenged, so we really need your help if you would step up. Thank you for everybody who has. Uh, we just need you to continue. Please do 1-800-NEW-LIFE, four, four the great, great devotional books when you join Club New Life at $30 a month. They are really powerful. And a gift of any amount, you get the brand new 100 Days of Healing, and it is one great devotional book. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let's talk to Wayne from Dallas, Texas, listening on KWRD. Hello, Wayne. How are you today? Good afternoon. Thank you. Hi. You're welcome. I'm, I am uh, calling. I've, I've had the opportunity and the blessing to listen to you all many times over the last 10 years, and I'm really challenged by a situation I have with my oldest daughter, who is a senior in college and away in another city. And uh, we had a difficult situation this summer that, uh, you know, I tried to sit down together with my wife and she and her boyfriend after, uh, you know, there was a, a situation where there was some deceit, which I had expected. I, I mean, I believed was happening, but the, the whole chain of events opened it up. After that, she went back to college. That was shortly before the start of the term. And I visited with her last night to just find out why uh, she had indicated she wasn't going to be at our house. The long and the short of it is, long difficult conversation a lot of tears and I guess what I'm struggling with this afternoon after hearing so many conversations about okay we got to get to that after this break she said we need to talk she's asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict you know I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong I, I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story you know I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done I had no idea how to help her with her pain she was a mess I was a mess and, and we got divorced going to EMB surrounding myself with these other men they accepted me for who I was and what I had done but they challenged me to step up and do better you know they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them you know get in the trenches they'll get hope from this workshop take my sweet wife and my story we were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back with with Wayne, and now let's get that question there, Wayne, that we didn't get in right before that break. What is the question, buddy? How how does, what is this, the loving space in accepting and, and connecting and not just wildly enthusiastically embracing values that are different than my own. Okay, so, all right, Wayne, you're talking code here, buddy. What's your What's your daughter doing that you don't like? Well, I mean, last night our conversation. She would like to live with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's How old is she? That's the crux of. It. How old is She's she? 21. She's okay. 21. She's 21. And I understand she can do that, and I can't control it. I, you know, she was. I, and I said to her recently, sweetheart, I love you, and there's nothing that can change that. And if, if that's what you'd like to do, then then that's what you can do. What I hear is you want to be free, and, and the path to complete freedom is simply that you say, Dad, I, I want to be completely on my own. Yeah. And that, I, are, I you said, su- okay. are you supporting her in any way? Uh, some financially. Uh-huh. Well, well I'm paying for college. I, are you going to continue uh, to contrib- pay for I'm college? And su- okay. Okay. So are you going to continue that uh, if they move in? Uh, that that certainly wouldn't be my preference. Well, if it was my daughter, um, I would not want to be supporting financially her living in a way that I know I just can't enable. I don't want to... Uh, support that behavior so I can't give the money for it to happen. So uh, if she needs to know, I think, that you love her, but it just can't continue. Now, I started early on telling my daughter, if you did certain things, here's the benefit. If you don't, then there's not the benefit. Um Maybe you didn't have that understanding, but I think it is time for you in a loving way. That's just my thought. We'll Mm -hmm. hear from Jill and Alice that you love her, but love is not, you know, God loves us unconditionally. He doesn't approve of us unconditionally. And there are consequences when we are not very uh, good at following him. Jill, Alice, what do you think here? Well, I, I think, Wayne, I, I like how you phrase some of your conversation with your daughter. And I think, you know, the idea to move in together is the step towards coming out from under your your parents, really. And that that is the truth. And I know that you've got that. And to explain to her what that means is important, while at the same time, and I think you did this, letting her know that... Um, you know, she gets to make her own decisions, even if they go against your values, but it does make you sad, right? It makes yeah. you sad because that was not what you wanted for her. 
I would want to spend some time with the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I would want to maybe invite him out to lunch and say, you know, I realize that you and I don't see eye to eye on things, but let me, would you be willing to hear me explain where we're coming from and how we raised our daughter? Because if you're stepping in and you're saying, I want to live with my daughter, that's a huge responsibility as a man. And I, I just want to make sure that you're understanding what that means for our daughter. And, and have a connection and ask him about his values and how he was raised. And really, it's like you're asking them to delay. She's a senior, right? Let's get her through right. college under your, you know, um, you know, help with your help. And then once she's out on her own, she gets, you know, she can do whatever she wants, essentially, right? Once she's paying for herself. But that also delays the time. And the relationship has a time to progress, and she has a time has time to see things that maybe might make her change her mind about that. And I'd love to do that, and I, and I I will continue to. Last night she said, you know, if there are any limits on how I'm living and who I'm choosing, then you really don't love me. Mm. Well, you would say to her, honey, honey, that really isn't true. And I understand you saying that to me because you want it both ways. You right. want to do some things that are against my values, but you want my financial support. My financial support, whether strong or weak, has nothing to do with my love for you. And in fact, honey, if I was a weak man... Mm. I would say, do whatever you want. Do drugs. I'll still give you money. Become an alcoholic. I'll give you more money. Steal from somebody else. I'll support you. I'll buy the best attorney ever to get you out of jail. That, honey, would not be love. That would be sickness on my part. And so I'm stepping up here as a loving father to tell you, you do have control of your life. And I can either support that financially or not. But I love you and I care about you. And I am not going to go to my grave knowing that I financially supported a lifestyle, choices, or decisions that went against every value that I have. And I know that's hard for you to hear. But you watch over the years to come. No matter what you do, I am always going to be here for you. I will always listen to you and help you, but I'm not going to support anything that I think is destructive to you, your relationship with God, and your future. It's just that simple, but it's that tough to say. It. But she needs that, Wayne. She needs yeah. that from you. And, and you Wayne, don't let her manipulate you. Adding that spiritual component, I don't think it gets talked of enough that right. you are her spiritual protector as long as she's under your authority. And moving in with a man before marriage leaves her spiritually vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. And I mm -hmm. think that needs to be said both to her and to the boyfriend. Then they'll make the choices they will. But taking that strong stance, Ephesians 4.15, with truth and grace while continuing to pursue relationship, that's God's formula for these situations. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I know that's a tough thing. And uh, if I were you, I would, I'll would i send you a copy of this book, Every Woman's Battle. I think it's a great book for her to, um, to be reading. Uh, I'll send you Every Young Woman's Battle, too. I don't know what developmentally, uh, what stage she's in. But you know what? It's so tough being a parent and then watching our kids do things that don't correspond to our values. So you continue to love, and, and, and you learn to respond, not in anger, not in disgust, but kind of understanding how they could end up with these kinds of values in this world, these kinds of choices. But you really do have to stand for what's right, or mm -hmm. nobody's going to stand for what's right. Well, I'm really glad that you listened today. If you want to join us on the next program, here's the number, 1-800-229-3000. If you can help us, great. But here's what I'm really interested in. I want to help you. And we've been working for years to put together weekend intensive experiences to meet the needs that you have. 
We're doing intensives that change lives in 48 hours. Do they change everything? No, but you change trajectory. And whatever marriage you're in, you want it to be better, you come to Columbus, Ohio, and we will help you make it better. Whatever situation you're in with objectifying women or uh, lust, pornography, affairs, you come. Um, you know, it is so common these days that a man is desperate, he's sexually stimulated, will have sex with anything or be aroused by anything. Nothing shocks us, but here's what is shocking to you. We'll love you, we'll help you, it's a shame-free zone, and you'll walk out of every man's battle a new man with brothers in the battle with you. That's what we'll do. 1-800-229-3000 for the next program. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You call us and we'll help you. Intimacy and Marriage, October 25th, Columbus, Ohio. Every Man's Battle, November the 1st in Orange County. Come join. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's one 800 